హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఐమ్ డాక్టర్ సుచిత విశ్వకర్మ అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ స్కూల్ ఆఫ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ సైన్సెస్ లక్నో వెల్కమ్ యూ ఆల్ టు ద సిరీస్ ఆఫ్ లెక్చర్స్ ఆన్ సప్లై చైన్ అండ్ లాజిస్టిక్స్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆ టుడేస్ టాపిక్ ఇస్ వేర్ హౌసింగ్ స్ట్రాటజీ ఇఫ్ యూ ఆల్ రిమెంబర్ దట్ ఇన్ ద ప్రీవియస్ క్లాస్ వీ హ్యాడ్ డిస్కస్డ్ అబౌట్ వాట్ ఇస్ వేర్ హౌస్ ద కాన్సెప్ట్స్ అండ్ ద వేరియస్ టైప్స్ వీ హ్యాడ్ ఆల్సో అండర్స్టూడ్ దట్ వై వేర్ హౌసెస్ ఆర్ సో వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ for any organization and we had understood that uh, keeping all kind of inventory is not actually practically possible or we are cost effective also for any, for any organization so warehousing provides lot of facilities lot of different kind of functions which ha- facilitate any of the organization for providing their products to the customer and increasing their sales and profitability also so over here we need to understand that how any organization needs to choose to choose or think uh, or pl- rather plan that what kind of warehousing uh, uh, strategy they they should have that means what kind of warehouse they should have and what are the different various aspects which will help them uh, not only increase their profit but also gain competitive advantage from their competitors so this is what we are going to discuss today in our uh, in uh, this present lecture that is warehousing strategy so let's get started about it so warehousing strategy as you can see that warehousing strategy involves uh, planning or taking decisions about the various important aspects such as investments and operations costs that makes up the logistics overhead in the previous class also we had discussed about that uh, warehouse are big facilities where the any of the organization can choose and think of keeping their products safely secure uh, safely for a long maybe for a medium term or a short term and uh, it has lot of facilities which helps in proper loading and loading and stacking up of up of uh, material and it also helps in uh, in uh, transportation purpose also so uh, for all these purposes students you need to understand that lots lots of cost is involved the, and this this cost uh, may or may not be very much uh, i mean um, of choice of the company that means the company may not be very much interested in spending lot of money on warehouse and so they need to think that uh, how i can reduce the cost uh, of warehouse uh, and also avail the maximum benefit from the warehouse too so that is what we are going to discuss about it so the where so the various uh, the warehouse strategies try to address following questions let us understand one by one that how many warehouse should an organization employ this is one very um, very important aspect that needs to be understood by any organization the second question that sh- uh, the warehousing strategy should address to is which type of warehouse because in our previous class we had discussed the five types of warehouse so an organization must understand that what is the type of warehouse they should choose the third is warehousing location what are the strategic or remote locations where they should choose to have their warehouses the site selection is something important because what is the pl- uh, what is the uh, place or what is the area where they want to have their wa- warehouse facilities required what are the different facilities as we discussed that the uh, uh, that warehouse is fun- uh, uh, i mean uh, provide various kind of functions pack packaging function labeling function protection storage uh, cold uh, cold uh, warehouses so what are the facilities required by the particular organization and the warehouse layout too i mean the internal structure of uh, warehouse or the shelves or the spacing that is also very very important aspect for any organization to think and plan that what is that they are looking for so now let's come uh, on one of uh, each one of them one by one now we'll just understand that uh, before a company actually chooses a warehouse they should think of that what are the number of warehouse they are looking for they uh, any organization may opt for single warehouse or multiple warehouse but obviously both of them have different kinds of cost and benefits so the, uh, let us understand them that single or centralized warehouse are simple infrastructures obviously having some one warehouse will obviously re- lead to reduced of cost incurring also but there would be a problem also i mean the uh, 
there would be only limitation of inventory to be kept in that particular uh, warehouse. However, at the same time, it will be easy to manage. So, if that means if any organization is operating in a small geographical area, then probably they can they can opt for single warehouse or centralized warehouse where they can keep their inventory and then get to, uh, get them distributed to or big, uh, distributed to all the nearby uh, locations of the that small geographical area. But if in case if an organization is operating in a large geographical area and their suppliers or distributors are distantly placed, then probably single warehouse will not function over here, will not serve the purpose. And so, in that case, the organization may opt for uh, multiple warehouse or de decentralized warehouse. In this, as a uh, it, uh, as the I mean the concept itself explains that it will have a spread in wider area, wider geographical area and uh, since there will be multiple warehouse the cost involved will increase per, per warehouse kind of, but then uh, the company will, uh, will get an option to keep small small amount of inventories in all these different multiple warehouses and that may lead to lower shipping cost also because the, transport, uh, the cost of transportation will also get reduced with the volume of shipment that is done. There will be uh, I mean a faster shipment will also be become easy because uh, smaller, uh, smaller transportation modes can be uh, opted up in that case. Lower vendor transportation cost will also lead uh, will also be uh, there in case of multiple warehouse and less stock vulnerability. That means if in case in, in at any particular warehouse the stocks get uh, stocked out or there is a damage or some problem, then uh, I mean uh, since because of less uh, less stocks at a particular warehouse, there will be more of flexibility also and and reduced risk also. So depending on the on the various uh, factors or the objectives of the organization, any organization may think of the number of warehouses. Now coming to the type of warehouse, as we had discussed there are five types of warehouse and uh, all the different types of warehouses have different functions. So, an organization may choose from any type of warehouse. So, uh, over here many firms use a combination of private, public and uh, contract facility of warehouse. A private or contract facility may be used to cover basic year round requirement, while public facility may be used to require to handle the um, increase and decrease during the in, uh, increase and re decrease requirement uh, decreased, uh, uh, requ uh, decreased uh, um, uh, inventory requirement to be uh, stocked at peak seasons. In other uh, situations also central warehouse may be private, while market area or field warehouses can be kept as a public facility. Full warehouse utilization throughout uh, a year is a remote poss possibility, so it is ideal for any organization to keep a combination of the different types of facility depending on the requirements and depending on the um, on the uh, I mean business cycle of the product. As a planning rule, also a warehouse design or facility utilization will be fact and fully and most of the time time it has been. Uh, uh, seen that uh, any warehouse is only 75 to 85 percent of utilized and thus from 15 to 25 percent of the time the space of uh, of the warehouse is not properly utilized so this is also one of the considerations not to have a uh, of not to have a uh, private warehouse completely if you have a I mean a dynamic uh, requirement of the product then in such situations, it also it may be efficient to provide public, a private facility to cover 75 percent of the of the requirement and use public facilities to accommodate peak demand. So over here, we understand that depending on the kind of product offering to the customer and depending on the kind of demand, that means if my demand is very very stable, then I may may look forward for keeping one kind of warehouse. But if I know that the demand goes up and down. Or is uh, dynamic, then obviously a combination of warehouse is more preferable. Now, addressing to the third question that is where the warehouse should be located. So, any organization has three options. The first is market position, second is product position and third is intermediately positions. So, let us see the facilities or the, or the benefits of having all these three kind of positioning. The market position is that 
in this the order cycle time will be less because if the uh, the warehouse is placed market position position means that the warehouse will be uh, will be placed will be uh, available or will be present at a place where which is near to the market area that means if uh, that means the buyers uh, are close by that particular warehouse so if the if the warehouse is near to market obviously the order order cycle time will get reduced that means whenever they are ordering the particular product the inven the inventory will soon reach them and that will lead to one competitive advantage the second is transportation cost would also get reduced because obviously the company would be obviously required to send the uh, the material to the to the warehouse but then from a uh, warehouse to different buyers the uh, smaller uh, transportations will be required smaller uh, i mean uh, d uh, small routes of transportation will be required and so that will lead to reduction of cost sensitivity of product is also if the product is very very sensitive to uh, let's say uh, sensitive to demand or sensitive to price and there there may be instances when um, when a lot of uh, variations in demand are coming due to x y z factors then obviously the then then also the company should think of having a warehouse at market placing near the market placing and in order to uh, break the size of the order also the the company should strategically think of keeping the uh, warehouse at the market because uh, in that uh, if if the company is having the warehouse near the market then obviously they can uh, provide the products in small small quantities as per the requirement of the customer so these are the basis uh, benefits of having a market position warehouse now coming to product position in case of product position the uh, the focus is more on product rather than customer and if i feel that the that the product offering is is, uh, is something which is of perish perishable quality and then probably i may think of not having a different uh, different uh, or many warehouses because each warehouse may not be uh, providing me with the facility of cold storage or such kind of things and so in that uh, in that case the focus is more on product rather than market the number of product mix is also one of the aspects where i should where the warehousing location gets shifted from market position to product position because if i have a larger mix of uh, mix of product offering then uh, and uh, there may be instances that all kind of customers are not uh, not wanting to have that complete kind of product mix from me not wanting to purchase that uh, that or order the uh, complete product mix from me so in that case i should be uh, should be at such a strategic location from where uh, i can serve a bigger area of uh, of buyers and uh, from where they can collect i mean somebody may collect larger product mix somebody may collect a smaller product mix uh, product uh, mix from me and so the focus shifts to product position uh, warehouse the third is assortment order by customer from product mix as i said assortment means assortment order by uh, customer from product mix means uh, they they should be able to identify know what kind of products or what other different kinds of uh, products offerings and then accordingly select as per their own choices and transportation consolidation consolidation rates if i have suppliers uh, suppliers from remote locations then also probably it will be easy for uh, for me to have a centralized kind of warehouse at one strategic location uh, so as to sell uh, to serve as a common point common juncture for all the different suppliers to consolidate their products uh, at one place and then the third uh, warehousing location option available to any company is intermediately position that means a company may then uh, that may after that think of having the warehouse at any immediate position it may be near to the distributor it may be near to the uh, any uh, i mean uh, highways for ease of transportation or any any where uh, in such a manner that means any place in between the point of production or and in uh, in bet, uh, and the point of consumption so it may may be their choice at what is the kind of uh, perspective or what is the objective that they are looking for, uh, looking for in warehousing location now coming to the uh, next point that is where the site of the warehouse should be so uh, over here as we can say that the site selection is based on the location of major major markets 
nature of product to be distributed, transportation mode and carriers, quality and quantity of labors available, cost of industrial land, potential for expansion, local tax structures, cost of construction, cost and availability of utilities uh, and any local government concession or incentives. This basically means that whenever I am choosing a particular site where I should have a, uh, a sh I, I shall have a where a private warehouse or maybe uh, the warehouse should be, should basically help me in uh, distributing and collecting my uh, supplies and uh, also give me advantage not only in terms of cost but in terms of value benefits also. So, over here various concepts come in consideration that means, if the uh, places are If the warehouse uh, location is near the major markets, then probably I will be able to uh, serve the, uh, the requirements of various customers simultaneously. The nature of product which we had already discussed, with, whether it is perishable, non-perishable, big or small in size and the transportation requirements, the mode of transportation require, requirement. If I have a uh, uh, have such products which which are not of consumption in the local area and has to be transported to to any other uh, city town or maybe uh, any other country then the uh, warehouse uh, site should be near to those uh, yards dockyards or airports then uh, the cost of industrial land this is very very important because this plays very important role in the in the cost of warehouse if the industrial land is very costly then uh, any person may think of shifting the warehouse if privately owned or uh, i mean if uh, thinking of having a privately owned or even in case of public or a public or um, cooperative kind of warehouse setting up of the, that warehouse will become very costly and so cost of industrial land has to be taken in consideration local taxes the subsidies given by the by the government local government or the central state level government or the central government also plays a lot of role then availability of cheap la labor resources also very important aspect because if the uh, warehouse uh, site is somewhere near to village or uh, such areas where uh, the habitats uh, habitants are uh, available where the uh, there is, uh, I mean, uh, residents are there where the uh, uh, laborers are uh, residing nearby. Then probably I can get a continuous flow of uh, laborers for loading, unloading, and various other purposes. But if I am not so, then probably uh, recruiting people from distant location will also become a task, and that will also become a costly affair. So at each and every time, the company must take consideration of the cost aspect at each and every point. Now coming to the warehouse layout, the objective of warehouse layout are basically uh, basically to provide enough sto uh, storage for the inventories and also to have enough working space for staffs to move and to complete their task. As we had already discussed in our previous lecture also that warehouses provide various kind of functions. Uh, so, uh, the, the and just to recapitulate that the functions include I mean the packing, the labeling, uh, the assortment the identification, the uh, recording, uh, the keeping record of the inventories and everything. So, so uh, it is very, very important that uh, the, the warehouse internal layout is arranged, that means the keeping of uh, the stacking of inventory or the internal layout is, uh, is done in such a systematic manner that it does not create a constraint or, uh, or um, hurdle in uh, the daily working of the people involved. That means they are they have a sufficient space that uh, loading and loading purposes uh, can be done also and identification of what kind of inventory is also kept where that is also done packaging packaging and labeling is also done and there is sufficient space that means all the inventories are not stacked up uh, uh, stacked up uh, hay why but are kept properly so as to reduce damage so the layout should be very well planned. The usual layouts of, of any warehouse are U, I or L shaped depending on the volumes and the type of products that are kept in that particular warehouse. As over here you can see this is a U kind of warehouse, over here the advantage is that simultaneously lots, lots of trucks can be, kept, uh, can be uh, called for and loading and unloading of lots of inventories can be done over here. In case of I kind of uh, I shaped of warehouse, it is 
easy that loading is done, loading and unloading is done from one end while the shipping and uh, dockyarding or something is done from the other end. That means, uh, I kind of structure is usually used when the warehousing uh, warehouses provide a function of, uh, I mean uh, in case of bonded warehouse where it serves as a purpose of providing multiple modes of transportation. And then coming to L shaped of warehouse. Over here, you can see that the trucks are, are placed over here, the shipping and uh, picking up of the material is done and the loading and loading is done separately. That means, the organization has kept two ways from one, one way, I mean uh, has channelized the routes rather. That means, one for the loading purpose, one for the loading purpose and other for the unloading purpose. Now, coming to the facilities required in warehouse. There are various kinds of facilities in required in the warehouse. The facilities may again be dependent on the kind of product uh, which has to be kept in the warehouse and uh, these facilities includes the storage system, the lift equipments, the dock equipments, the conveyor belts, the facility uh, equipments, bins, containers, packing equipments. <coughs> so, storage system basically, uh, the storage facility basically means the wide uh, shelves, the wide and the high heighted uh, shelves which are basically used to keep different kind of inventories on which stacking can be done properly. Lift equipments are basically helped for, uh, for, uh, for stacking uh, the uh, inventories, the packets, the boxes at a higher height. Dock equipment equipments are basically those which helps in, uh, in uh, shifting of the uh, inventory which is kept in the warehouse from uh, the shelf to the dockyard or the loading uh, to the unloading or unloading position. Conveyor belts are basically kind of big belts on which which are <coughs> very commonly seen on the in the assembly line also and otherwise on the warehouse also where movement of inventories within the warehouse itself happens through through which the movement of inventories within the warehouse itself happens. Then other facility equipments basically means the fire extinguishers, the, uh, the recording facility, the, the cameras, the, um, the computers or any, any other ki kind of facility equipments, bins and containers for disposing of any, any undesirable uh, inventory <coughs> and then the packaging equipment and machinery which basically means that uh, all the things that are required for different kind of packing for different kind of inventories. So, because size and functionality differ so much in warehouse buildings, the type of uh, equipment needed for smooth operations may also vary at times. So, over here we also need to understand the factors influencing warehouse strategy. The five functions, uh, the five factors that influence the warehouse strategy are presence synergy, industry synergy, operating flexibility, location flexibility and scale of economies. Presence uh, synergy basically means that if an a warehouse is present near the production unit, it will not only reduce the cost uh, cost of carrying the inventory in within the warehouse, but it will also help in uh, in uh, following the concepts of GIT also, and will also help in uh, maintaining a proper supply of uh, raw material at the desired um, assembly positions, assembly line positions, and will also help. In, uh, in, in it will also help in um, increasing the productivity and efficiency of the organization. Then industry synergy, industry synergy when, uh, means basically that when uh, two, three P, uh, two, three organizations within the same industry are collaborating together and trying to have a mutual advantage or mutual benefit of, of having a warehouse near to that particular location, near to their production units or near to their location because through that they will be able to max uh, to optimize the warehouse capacity also properly utilize the uh, warehouse capacity also and will be able to help them uh, reduce the cost of warehousing for all of them operating flexibility is the ability to adjust internal policies and procedures that means if an organization is uh, is uh, having let's say uh, is uh, producing in in batch form or is uh, Pr uh, producing their goods in, uh, I mean, uh, 
customized form then obviously they will require to have a lot of flexibility that what is the kind of raw material or supplies that they require at this position and, the, and which may they, which they may require at a later position if there is a, a, a variation in that then obviously this is a uh, then the warehouse is required for providing such flexibilities which would come under operating flexibility location flexibility is the ability to quickly adjust warehouse location and numbers that means uh, if an organization has uh, again i said uh, if it has uh, different kinds of demands then probably there is a, and uh, say different set of customers are require, are there and if the company is producing different kinds of products also then it may be situations that i am serving such certain uh, customer segment at present location uh, at present uh, uh, duration of the year and then uh, there is another kind of product which i would be producing in next 3 4 after 3 4 months and then for which uh, other set of customers are there so that means the company will be required to have a uh, location which is flexible to the different flexible demands of the of the customer uh, sorry flexible demands of the uh, company and so uh, location flexibility is very much required then scale of economies that means ability to reduce handling materialing uh, handling and storage through applications of advanced technology this is also very very important aspect now coming to the factors influencing strategy over here we can see that depending on the different types of warehouses the synergies are in different manner that means the present syner present synergy is more in case of private while more in ca uh, while uh, in case of industry synergy the public uh, warehouses are uh, play a significant role similarly the operating flexibility is more in case of private uh, warehouse while it is more uh, the the uh, facility or the benefit of public having a public warehouse provides a facility of location flexibility and scale economies. So over here we are over with this particular topic of uh, warehousing strategy. I hope by uh, understanding this topic in detail you would be now able to manage um, warehouses and uh, you will be able to help your organization in proper uh, decision making related to what and how and uh, where the warehouse needs to be uh, strategically thought about and uh, positioned. So for further, further uh, uh, information you can go to these websites and these uh, refer to these books. Thank you.